Hello everyone and welcome back to another installment from our series Straight From The Horse's Mouth. Today's webinar focuses on the various aspects that involve getting started with the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosure or TCFD bracket. Here's a sneak preview. Which is really a document that takes, as I said, the best of the best of climate change reporting and the best of the best of financial reporting and brings them together to help you with how to integrate this information into your annual report in a way that makes sense with the financials uh, and, and makes sense to the investor to provide them a more complete picture of uh, your organization. Are you capturing any climate related data already? Um, and how can this information perhaps be used for TCFD? The framework was really developed with the global market in mind to make sure it is applicable no matter where you are, no matter what sector you are in. In order to get a holistic picture of climate related risks and opportunities and the impacts that they will bring across the organisation, you should consider forming an internal working group of some sort. It is essentially a Google for uh, all the resources that are out there in the world to help you implement the TCFD recommendations. I think the most important thing to take away from this is that it is an iterative approach. We don't expect you to have all of the information in one go. This webinar summarizes what the TCFD actually is, how to navigate resources such as the Knowledge Hub as well as other aspects which would be categorized as one's first few steps in undertaking this framework. With that, let's get started. Hello and welcome back to our webinar series straight from the horse's mouth, insights from experts in 30 minutes. My name is Christine Schaller, I'm carbon and climate specialist at ThinkStep and I'm your host for the next half an hour. Today we focus on climate related financial risks and more specifically on how you can get really started with the TCFD reporting. We will have a second TCFD webinar in two weeks time on the 25th of February as a follow up on today on how you can improve, improve your TCFD disclosure. So a warm welcome to Michael Simeone and Gemma Clements from the Climate Disclosure Standards Board, short CDSB, who are dialing in from Berlin and London. We are so excited to have you join us today and an extra special thanks to both of you to stay up that late. <laughs> so before I hand over to Michael and Gemma, I'd like to give a really short intro to what we're covering today. So today is all about the financial impact that climate has on, um, on a company and the financial impact is really what we're focusing on. And that's a little bit of a different view from the classic ESG reporting, which is rather focusing on the other way around. So impacts from companies on climate. So those impacts can be costs, for example, from physical risks of flooding, can also be from transition risks as demands may change in a low carbon economy and that has a cost and an impact for your company. But then there can also be opportunities that we should not forget about. So the main questions mainly being asked by investors are, what is the likely cost of climate change for your organization? And how is your organization prepared for that? I'd like to hand over to Michael. He's policy and external affairs director at CDSB to give an overview of how CDSB and the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosure, TCFD, actually fit together and how they help to answer those two questions. Michael was down under in 2019 for an introductory TCFD workshop in New Zealand. And it's good to have you back, even though it's just virtually. And um, I'd like to hand over to you. Thanks, Michael. Thank you very much, Christine, and uh, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to uh, to be back, even though not in person. I have to say it's freezing cold here in Berlin at the moment, so I'd much rather be uh, with you in person uh, with a nice cup of coffee, but this will have to do. So uh, I'd, just, I'd like to kick off uh, quickly uh, with a bit, bit of an introduction to CDSB, just to make sure you know who we are, uh, as, as Christine said, to, to describe how we uh, work to support the implementation of the TCFD recommendations and really just a bit of a repetition of, of what you've you've already outlined to hammer home what the TCFD is all about. So CDSB stands for the Climate Disclosure Standards Board uh, and we were set up back in 2007 in, at, at Snowy Davos in Switzerland at the World Academic Forum's annual meeting with the mission 
to bring together the climate change reporting world and the financial reporting world. Even back in 2007, there was an understanding that uh, climate related matters have an impact on financial performance, both risks and opportunities, but they were developing separately and linking them together so that investors, primarily providers of capital, have a good understanding of the future ability to create value of a business was essential. And this is why we were set up. Our board members are on the top of your uh, top line of, of, the, of those uh, logos there. Uh, we're kindly hosted within CDP's offices. Um, and below that, you see a couple of examples of our wonderful technical working group members. There are about 50 of them, so we can't fit them nicely on the slide, but they are really the experts, the technical geeks, as I like to call them, who help us uh, with technical rigor to make sure that what, everything that we produce is technically rigorous, usable, and, and useful to support companies in integrating climate change and environmental information into their annual reporting. And the main output of uh, our work is the CDSB framework, which is really a document that takes, as I said, the best of the best of climate change reporting and the best of the best of financial reporting and brings them together to help you with how to integrate this information into your annual report in a way that makes sense with the financials uh, and, and makes sense to the investor to provide them a more complete picture of uh, your organization. It has seven principles how to report, make sure the information is material, clear, understandable, consistent, comparable. Um, and this is actually coming from financial reporting standards and the experience that the financial reporting uh, has already. It also has 12 requirements, what to report. And this is nothing more than a, and then a link back to the existing reporting standards in climate change reporting uh, that companies are already using. So if you're reporting to CDP, for example, you already have the information that you need to use to integrate into your annual report. You just need to apply the framework to understand what is material in the context of your annual reporting and how to make sure that it makes the most sense within the annual report. So I very much encourage you to have a look at, at the framework. It is also something that is referenced uh, globally uh, by governments. Uh, our first uh, reference was in the UK to the Companies Act requirements. So if you're listed there, you might already be familiar with us. Uh, but also in uh, the European Union as part of the European Non-Financial Reporting Directive and uh, other jurisdictions, Canada and others, as well as stock exchange uh, listing guidances uh, in Australia, as well as, as, as uh, London, Tokyo, uh, New York, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the framework was really developed with the global market in mind to make sure it is applicable no matter where you are, no matter what sector you are in. The very important element of the TCFD frame or the CDSB framework in this context is that it was one of the inspirations behind the TCFD recommendations. If you look at closely at the CDSB framework and the TCFD recommendations, you may have you may see some copy and pasting uh, happening there, which we're very proud of and very happy about. And so we are very happy to be uh, an organization that is really behind and supportive of the TCID recommendations. And a lot of the work that we do actually is supporting uh, businesses in implementing the TCID recommendations by providing this material, this technical uh, guidance uh, to help them implement the TCID recommendations. And here you see a bit of a visualization of how this CSB framework is aligned with the various elements of the TCID recommendations, providing you with more detailed guidance on uh, how to actually uh, implement the recommendations. In addition to the framework and the many other technical guidances, uh, another uh, piece of work that we are very proud of is uh, the work we do on behalf of the TCFD, which is the TCFD Knowledge Hub. It is essentially a Google for uh, all the resources that are out there in the world to help you implement the TCFD recommendations. And what we hear from businesses often is they just can't find what is what is already out there because they're so they're spread out all over the place, and it's really hard to find what, let's say, uh, a mining company in Australia uh, might have in, in in terms of guidance for scenario analysis under the TCID recommendations. So you can come here, do your filtering, and find what is already out there. We also have some excellent online courses to get you started. Uh, they're CPD accredited, and they're about an hour each to get you. Uh, sort of familiar with the recommendations and just make you dangerous enough to, uh, to do some damage in terms of uh, your own reporting as well. So very much encourage you to 
have a look at it. There's also some case studies to learn from others and, and many, many other very useful uh, resources as well. So that's enough about us. Um, we'll, uh, we can talk uh, more about that uh, later, but I also wanted to frame up the discussion that uh, Gemma will uh, get into after me to give you a bit of a perspective and a refresher on the TCFD uh, recommendations themselves. So what is the TCFD, where do they come from in, a, in, in 10 seconds or, or less? Um, the TCFD, TCFD stands for the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures, a bit of a mouthful. And they were really uh, an, an, a task force set up by, by the market for the market. Um, the, the then governor of the Bank of England, uh, Mark Carney, has uh, understood as, uh, in his, through his work that there is a macro prudential, a financial stability implication of uh, the underrepresentation of climate risk in annual reporting. And so for the sake of enhancing financial stability globally, he has called on the Financial Stability Board to establish a task force on climate related financial disclosures, which of course Mike Bloomberg has chaired and has been represented uh, and has representatives uh, from all sec or areas of finance, both from the companies themselves all the way up to um, asset managers and asset owners and advisors. They came up with their voluntary recommendations, which are becoming not so voluntary in many uh, countries and, you know, I'm looking at New Zealand, of course, being the first one to make it, make the recommendations mandatory. And uh, of course, lots of great work happening in Australia, ASIC and, and others uh, doing great work interpreting what the TCID recommendations mean uh, in the Australian context as well. But this, there's a lot of work happening here in Europe, in the UK, uh, in Canada. The Biden administration is looking at this as well as part of their 100 days in office uh, plan. So there's a lot happening in this space. And so it is currently voluntary, but I think it's only a matter of time uh, before it really becomes uh, mandatory uh, globally across key jurisdictions. And now an important element of the recommendations is that they were designed to report climate related financial disclosures. So financial impact as Christine also mentioned is a key element of, this, uh, of these recommendations. And they were designed because of a lack of this information in annual financial filings or annual reports of companies. So they are designed to be within your annual reports. And that's the reason behind our second question there to sort of start you thinking about uh, this differentiation. They have uh, a focus on, on the financial sector and other high risk non-financial sectors. By non-financial, they just mean non-finance sectors, um, but they are of course applicable to all uh, sectors. And as, as Christine mentioned, they have, uh, they differentiate between transition risks, the, the risk associated with the transition to a low carbon economy, but also physical risks, the physical risks affecting uh, the business. There's a focus on risk, but uh, a, 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 you know, alongside every risk is an opportunity. So it's also important not to forget the climate related financial opportunities that uh, the future might present to your business. They are forward-looking in nature and have, of course, uh, a, a focus on scenario analysis, the buzzword of the TCID recommendations, perhaps. And they are, of course, designed to cover short-term, medium-term, and long-term impact and risks. And they are qualitative and quantitative in nature as well. You see the four areas of the, of the recommendations. Uh, we call this the onion diagram, governance, strategy, risk management, metrics, and targets. And you can see that each of the different recommendations sits within the other. So a strategy is a part of governance, risk management is a part of strategy, metrics and targets and uh, is a part of risk management. They're all interconnected. They're just focusing in on, on different areas of a complete picture that uh, your business is uh, painting to the, to, your, to the readers of your annual report. So the very, very last concept I want to cover before I hand over is the, the point that Christine also mentioned, but I really want to hammer that uh, point home. There are two different uh, lenses at which you can look at uh, reporting. Um, there are many others, but perhaps these are the, are the most common ones. One is the inside out. What is my impact as a business on the environment, uh, on, on, on climate change? Um, and uh, what is uh, the impact of the environment 
on my business. So uh, when you're looking at your impact, that is, a, that is a reported, of course, very important and, and, and useful to a wide range of stakeholders. And I just noticed, I think that the arrows are the wrong way around on, on, on my side, and I apologize for that. Um, and uh, the other side of things, and this is very much the TCFD's perspective, how is my business impacted by all these changing elements and externalities? And what is the impact of these on me? What are the risks and opportunities? Now, it's important to understand that even though uh, my business impacts on the environment are not the primary focus, these can come back and impact my business. So if I pollute, I might be uh, prone to liability or other transition risks that might then have a financial, material financial impact on my business. So when looking at um, this, another lens at which, another di dimension which, uh, with, with which you can look at this is alignment versus risk. So one side, my impact on the uh, environment and, and reducing that and making sure that it is compliant, for example, with the Paris Agreement is alignment uh, and contribution to climate targets versus the risks of the environment uh, to my business. These are both equally and, and very important elements where this is, this is not about uh, meaning, saying that one is more important than the other. It is just a lens at which, as, as, uh, from through which uh, an investor might assess your business and therefore the lens through which the TCFT recommendations uh, at, at, so approach this area as well. So with this, I'll stop. And uh, do I hand back to you, Christine? Yes, thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Um, that was excellent. Thanks for the refresh on the TCFD recommendations and especially to explain how CDSB and TCFD actually fit together. That was really helpful. So now we're excited to hear from Gemma about the really practical first steps and recommendations that our audience should take to get started with their TCFD report. So Gemma is Capacity Building and Engagement Manager at CDSB. And one of her main roles is to manage the TCFD Knowledge Hub. So she really knows what you might need um, in order to get started. So over to you, Gemma. Thank you. and. Uh... Hello from freezing cold London. Um, it's great to be here today. And yeah, so hopefully I can give you kind of following on from uh, Michael, give you some insight into kind of where to get started. I think the polls at the beginning really demonstrate that, that some of you um, are at the beginning of your journey and please don't be scared. Um, there are a, there's a lot out, out there to help you uh, and hopefully I can give you some tips um, today. So um, the TCFD, they when they released their final recommendations, they came up with a five-year implementation plan. Now, this implementation plan was broadly across how the TCFD would, would um, be implemented globally. But also, the, the idea was that for companies, it's going to take some time to embed this type of information into your disclosure and into the way that you do business. Um, and at CDSB, we designed a checklist for success. Um, so there are 11 elements on here. And what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to highlight a few of those and, and talk you through them in a little bit of detail. Don't worry, we'll send a link around to this checklist after, after the webinar um, so that you can, you can have a look through and, and go through it for your own organization. So I think one of the most important things to do to get started is to create a roadmap and to think about how you're going to get from where you currently are to fully embedding climate related risks and opportunities into both your risk management processes and your governance and the way in which your business does business uh, your business operates um, and making sure that your business is fully resilient to any future um, risks. Now to do that, you're going to have to assess where you are at the beginning of your journey. To do that, one of the things that we suggest is to perhaps create an internal working group and to conduct a gap analysis of what you already have within your organization. So to focus in on one of those elements, and that's kind of creating a TCFD team, um, in order to get a holistic picture of climate related risks and opportunities and the impacts that they'll bring across the organization, you should consider forming an internal working group of some sort. Um, and this, uh, I have to say from where we've been working with companies, the most 
successful approaches that we've seen are those where they have um, tackled this issue across the organization, not just in a silo within a sustainability team, but throughout, throughout the business. There have been different approaches uh, that companies have taken, some top down where senior leadership has really taken the lead um, or bottom up where a lot of the different functions come together to develop a plan. In either approach, I think it's important that you find a climate champion within your organization. Ideally, someone uh, within senior leadership on the board, even better, but someone who understands the importance of these issues and can set the tone from the top uh, and make sure that the, whatever you're embedding is able to be integrated throughout the company. It's also important to get other functions and departments on board. Different um, professionals will have different expertise and perspectives on, um, on how climate will impact the company and for example, if you're a sustainability professional and you're thinking about, you know, how do I tackle future risk? You know, how do I assess that? Speak to your risk management team. They already have some processes in place and you'll be able to learn a lot from them. And where we talk about TCFD and the lens being focused on financial reporting, it's a great idea to get your finance team involved and making sure that you're making those connections between the two. And if you have different divisions, it also might be um, a good idea to get representative from those different business units involved because climate change is going to impact the business in different ways uh, in different business units. So make sure you've, you've got a, a good team together. Based on the results of the questionnaire, uh, I'm going to have to rethink at this a little bit because uh, the idea is kind of leverage on the work that you're already doing. And I know a lot of you said that you don't have any disclosure on this at the moment. I think you'll probably find you do have something, um, something that can either be utilized or tweaked um, in order to kind of demonstrate um, how climate change is embedded. So leveraging on not just your existing disclosure, but also on the internal processes that you may already have. So in terms of your disclosure, um, have a look, are you capturing any climate related data already? Um, and how can this information perhaps be used for TCFD? For example, are you doing a life cycle an assessment? And um, are you, do you have a greenhouse gas emissions inventory um, that collects scope one, scope two, scope three emissions? This type of information is foundational and you may not necessarily disclose all of that information, but if you're collecting it, then you can definitely build out on that data and kind of consider what the future risks and impacts might be on your entire value chain. Um, if you report to CDP, and I know, again, some most of you said that you don't, um, but if you do disclose to CDP, as Mike said, they've already aligned their questionnaire to the TCFD. Um, so you can quite easily map the information that you're already collecting and already disclosing. Or do you disclose to other reporting frameworks? Um, last year, or in fact, in 2019, I forget we're in 2021 already. In 2019, as part of the Better Alignment Project, um, the large um, international reporting standards bodies came together to demonstrate how the different standards um, and frameworks can be used under the umbrella of the TCFD. And they mapped that across. So have a think about what it is that you're already disclosing. And in terms of your processes, does your board already have a delegated sustainability committee or a CSR committee that can include climate related risks and opportunities into its oversight mandate? Um, and you know, what are the existing risk management processes that are in place? So do have a, have a talk to the, your colleagues in the different teams. Most importantly, and I'm, I'm going to finish. I know it's been a whirlwind of quick uh, tips just to just to get you started. And that's the point of this uh, webinar. I think the most important thing to take away from this is that it is an iterative approach. We don't expect you to have all of the information in one go. We don't expect you to start from zero and to give us a fully compliant TCFD report in year one. So take it as a iterative and phased approach. Think about your roadmap. Where are the different um, stages that you want to be at in six months time, a year's time, uh, in five years time, and understand that 
as our understanding of climate risk improves over the years, your analysis is also going to improve over the years. So an example on the screen at the moment is from the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, who year on year have disclosed um, their phase approach. So they have clearly told us what phase one, phase two, phase three and onwards looks like. And they update us every year. So some years they don't actually get to do all of the work that they intended to do in phase two or three. And that then passes into the next year. But this transparent approach about how you're tackling this information is is very interesting. And it's something that the investors want to know. They don't expect everyone to have a crystal ball and to predict what climate change is going to do. But what we do want to know is that you're taking it seriously and that you're embedding this information into your into your business and that you're putting in place the processes that mean that you are going to be able to assess this information, if not today, if not tomorrow, next year or the year after. There are some um, guidance out there. Um, Mike's already mentioned the TCFD Knowledge Hub that we're very proud of and the online courses. They are very quick to do um, and they are kind of foundational. They gave you the, the information. So those of you who said, what is the TCFD at the beginning? Um, take a look at the online courses. They're free to access. Um, and CDSB has also created some um, the implementation guide and the good practice handbook that gives you some um, good examples of what disclosure might look like. And the TCFD themselves have also recently come out with new guidance um, specifically on scenario analysis, risk management um, processes, because they recognize that's a challenging area. So get yourself onto the TCFD Knowledge Hub and, and take, have a search through to find the right information that will help you out. And that's me. Excellent. Thank you so much, Gemma. That was really insightful. And I think my take key away, uh, key takeaway is that we really need a cross-functional team to start off with um, with TCFD. So that's I think the, the most important bit that I take away. And also um, thanks for the useful um, checklist. So I'm really looking forward to hearing more in a couple of weeks in our part two. Um, but now I'd like to hand over to our audience um, with a couple of questions. I think the first one is probably for you, Michael, as you were talking about the standards and the frameworks in the very beginning. It's from Adam. And he asks, if you work for a company which does not uh, do financial reporting, how easy is it to put TCFD into um, a GRI report? Would you be able to take that on? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I mean, I think, you know, most uh, companies are required legally to put through some one a report in one form or another. So um, if, if, you know, might be something that uh, it's important to look into with a bit more detail. If, the, if, you, if you really don't produce um, anything like this, then perhaps that's something, you know, as part of your TC reporting, you know, sustainability is about people, planet, profits. So financials are also part of sustainability. And so perhaps you might consider producing such a com comprehensive report that includes some financials and also related sort of TC idea of climate related financial information. And if there it's if that's really not an option, and perhaps in the first you know stage, initial stages that's not an option, you might consider thinking about uh, your GRI report in those two lenses that I presented, and you know looking at the financial or as we like to call it enterprise value cre creation mutuality perspective. Uh, that section might be able to, might be your sweet spot uh, to implement the TCA the recommendations. Perhaps that's a nice approach to, to, to try. I think there was um, a question of the classifying and the definition again of climate related, but then also financial and non-financial disclosures. Uh, I'm not sure, Gemma, would you um, be able to just give a, a quick refresh on that? Sure. So that's a great question. There's lots of different terminology that's used. Financial, non-financial, sustainability, ESG data. Um, it can be quite confusing. Um, but essentially, where we talk about financial information, we're talking about we're talking about information that has direct impact on your financial statement. Um, or can be quantified in some way, whereas non-financial disclosures usually uh, means the kind of information like um, your greenhouse gas emissions data, water usage, pollution. Um, but there is overlaps between the two because non-financial 
uh, disclosure can become financial disclosure. Um, some people even call it pre-financial disclosure. So there's um, there's a lot of complexity in the language. Um, but I think the way the mic the mic talked about the two different lenses, I think that's quite that's a, an easier way to kind of describe the difference. There is another question. Um, we are already um, having a sustainability report and an annual report. Do we need to have a separate TCFD report? Michael, would you be able to answer? <laughs> no, please don't have another report. I don't think anybody, it would, it would make your life uh, more difficult and, and the reader's life more difficult who would have to read another report. So the, the point of, of, the, of the TCFD recommendations is really to put that, to make the bridge between your sustainability report and, and your annual report and be in your annual report. You can then have that financial materiality lens covered there and refer to the to more information in your sustainability report, producing that nice link and 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 uh, having a connected suite of reporting that you have. And can I just jump in as well? I 100% agree with Mike, and I think one of the things that people get a little bit overwhelmed with is that, that the TCFD is going to be 20 30 40 pages of information it can sometimes be very succinct and we encourage um concise um disclosure as well so in our good practice handbook some of the examples are literally tiny paragraphs or if not a couple of sentences that you might add to specific elements of your existing reporting to demonstrate that that climate change is embedded within for example your governance processes you don't need a whole chapter just on that or, or a whole page on that you can just add um, information that demonstrates that quite well so succinct information is also the way forward there's one um, specific question from um, Margaret on, will TCFD disclosure become mandatory for listed companies only? And I think that was related specifically to the UK, but maybe we can answer that question a bit more broad. In general, um, well, the TCFD recommendations are, are d designed for uh, listed entities over, over a certain threshold, so large listed companies but also other actors in the financial system. And so the UK's implementation has really uh, been all encompassing of the financial system. So we're, the, the Green Finance Strategy of, of the UK is a good uh, document to read, but essentially it's listed companies, asset managers are being uh, also, uh, the, the TCFD is also being implemented for them as well and even pension funds are, have been announced. So it's happening now. So if you, if you uh, have a look around online, you will find specific texts uh, being drafted apart from the companies, they're, they're yet to come, but financial actors are actually already um, in, in the process of being required to implement the TCFD, yes. Uh, in global, and the, sorry, and then the global point, just to add, that's the general trend. Usually it's, it's yeah. primarily the listed entities but also other uh, sort of actors in the financial markets. So. Perfect, thanks. Thanks, Mike. I think we'll have to wrap up as we run over a little bit already. Um, so we will make sure to get back to you and answer all the um, outstanding questions. Please don't hesitate to um, contact us if there's anything else you'd like us to, to answer. So um, within the last 30 minutes, there were a lot of resources mentioned and we put all of them together on our website. Yeah, that leaves me with thanking Gemma and Mike again. Thanks for your time. Um, and thank you for sharing our insight, your insight with us. We are very much looking forward to part two on the 25th of February. Um, and also thank you to our audience. Um, if you have any specific topics that you would like us to cover, cover in the future or any general feedback, please let us know and get in touch. And we are looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you all for joining and have a good day. Thank you.